Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. I welcome you all to your next session of the Knowledge Series. I hope all of you have been attending all these live classes of the Knowledge Series that take place every single day at 10 a.m. and at 3 p.m. Make sure that you do subscribe to our YouTube channel of Baiju's IAS so that you don't miss out on even one single of these class. In this class today, we will be discussing about a very, very significant topic from Indian governance. We will today be talking about the CBI, that is the Central Bureau of Investigation. One of those agencies that remain in the news for a whole lot of reasons. Unfortunately, most of the times it is because of the criticism of this agency. Today we will be talking about specifically why is there such a criticism of the CBI? How does it work? Why is it in the news? Who is the appointing authority? So on and so forth. So without any further delay, Let's see the details that you need to know about the CBI, that is the Central Bureau of Investigation. Now, if you actually look at the history of the CBI, you would notice that it actually dates back to our pre-independence time. It was set up as something called the Special Police Establishment, that is the SPE of 1941. It was given a statutory status in 1946 under the law called the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act. Now you can see the relationship between the earlier name of the CBI that was a special police establishment and the statutory status that it was given under the act that was called the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act. As the name suggests, it was specifically to work at the central government level based in Delhi and specifically to look into the cases which need investigation from the side of the central government. Now to understand this, police is a state subject. So every single state in India would have their own police if they have to investigate a certain matter. Punjab would have their own police, Kerala would have their own police, Maharashtra would have it, so on and so forth. But what about the central government? When the central government also wants to investigate a certain matter, they want to have an agency of their own and that is where the CBI the Central Bureau of Investigation comes into the picture. At the state level also, we have an investigative agency that the state governments use, which is called the CID. Not the serial that you use or that you actually are used to watching, but the CID is the agency that works at the state level. Similarly, CBI works at the central government level. The CBI mainly has three divisions, which take up cases depending upon their own expertise. We have the anti-corruption division of the CBI, we have the Economic Offences Division of the CBI and then we have the Special Crimes Division of the CBI. Now these names are very much self-explanatory. The Anti-Corruption Division means this is the arm of the CBI that takes up cases mainly regarding the corruption cases. So for instance, let's assume that there's a CAG report that has come out which has pointed out towards a whole lot of corruption in certain government contracts. Let's assume the 2G scam report came out or the Commonwealth Game report had come out. Those are certain reports that point out towards certain kind of corruptions taking place at the government level. If the central government wants to investigate that even further, they will call up the anti-corruption division of the CBI and then they will take up the investigation further. Similarly, we have economic offenses division, specifically meant and trained to handle economic offenses. So when a whole lot of money and other kind of finances are involved, that is where the economic offenses division comes into the picture. They are trained to handle these cases. And then all the remaining cases that we have, they come into the special crimes division. I'm not sure how many of you watched that movie Talwar or if you followed the real life case of Arushi Talwar, that is a young girl that was murdered in Noida. Now that became a very famous case, it was first investigated by the, the state police and then it went to the CBI. So if the CBI has to take up such cases, let's say involving violence, murder, etc. They cannot form or they cannot come under the anti-corruption division. That crime cannot come under the economic offenses division. So that particular kind of a crime would come under the special crimes division of the CBI. So that is how the cases are divided because Specific officers of the CBI have been given training in certain respect and that is how they take up those kinds of cases. Now, the biggest question that we have is what kind of cases can the CBI take up? For example, tomorrow there is a theft at your place or let's say there is an accident in which two people are involved. Can the CBI take up those cases? Yes or no? 
or let's say a murder has been committed or a great crime or a great conspiracy is being committed against the state can the cbi take up those cases or not there is a very specific division between which are the cases that the cbi can take up and which are the cases that the cbi cannot take up now let's see how the cbi can sue moto take up investigation of offenses only now the keyword here is only in union territories meaning that if there is a certain case the roots of which are in a certain state let's say maharashtra west bengal up gujarat if there is a crime that has taken place in these states within these states then the cbi automatically cannot take up those cases no the cbi only has a power to sue moto take up cases which are taking place in a union territory do remember that the central government can authorize the cbi to investigate a crime in a state but only with the consent of the concerned state now the word consent here is probably the most significant word that you will read with respect to the cbi let's try and understand here what is the meaning of the word consent let's take a simple example let's say there is a case that has taken place in the state of maharashtra now by default the cbi cannot take up the investigation because by default they can only take up those cases that are happening in a union territory now maharashtra is not a union territory right now what happens is if the state of maharashtra or the government of maharashtra officially gives the recommendation or officially allows the cbi to take up the case they can over here there are two types of consents that you need to understand there is something called the general consent and then there is something called specific consent before i go forward just to clarify here the word suo moto which i am sure many of you would have read already specifically with respect to judiciary supreme court etc suo moto means by itself for example let's say if i have to drink a glass of water if i can drink it suo moto means i can just have it without asking anyone but if you are sitting in a class and you have to go outside to drink water you have to then go and take permission so suo moto by default means by itself they don't have to take anyone's permission they don't have to depend on anyone else that is what suo moto means so there are two types of consents that states usually give to the cbi one is called general consent and the second is called specific consent now let's understand the difference between the two as i said let's say there is a case that happened in the state of maharashtra and the maharashtra government wants the cbi to come up and investigate they can do that because the maharashtra government has already given the consent to the cbi now let's take it in some other manner let's assume that cbi is investigating a case that had taken place in a union territory let's say delhi and cbi is investigating the matter now as a part of that investigation let's assume the cbi has to go to a state maharashtra tamil nadu gujarat rajasthan to investigate the matter further or they have to let's say arrest a person from one of these states when the cbi wants to enter that particular state they have to take permission from the state government or when the cbi has to enter the state even to investigate any matter they have to take permission from the state government in order for them to actually do that this is where two types of consents come in general consent means that cbi has been given the permission that whenever they want to enter the state they can they don't have to come to the state government time and time again they can come to the state arrest the person or investigate the matter and then go back without any special permission being required this is called general consent again if the general consent has been provided that means the cbi can go to that particular state without asking the state government for the permission specifically in that matter investigate the matter take up questioning arrest the person etc on the other hand if let's say maharashtra government did not give the general consent to the cbi or they had taken back the general consent from the cbi that means whenever cbi has to enter that state if they want to have their powers to investigate the person to arrest the person then every single time that they enter the state they have to take specific permission from the state government they have to apply for the permission in every single case that is the difference between general consent and the specific consent for specific consent for every single case you have to take permission enter the state do your bit and then come back for general consent it's an overall consent that is being given 
you don't have to go to the state government time and time again. This is also another reason why CBI as a topic has been in the news because what has happened is in the past few years, we have seen that a lot of state governments, specifically the ones which are ruled by non BJP parties means essentially opposition parties with respect to the center government, those states are withdrawing the general consent from the CBI. Of some time back, West Bengal state announced that we are withdrawing the general consent from the CBI. Why? We don't want the CBI to enter our state and arrest our people and investigate without our permission. So usually the concept of general consent and specific consent is now being seen as a political tool, mainly being used by the opposition parties who fear that the CBI is being misused by the ruling government at the center. The other exception is when the judiciary comes into the picture more specifically the higher judiciary. The Supreme Court and the High Courts, for example, can give an order to the CBI to investigate a crime anywhere in the country without even giving the consent to the state. That is how it works. Meaning that if the Supreme Court or the High Court, if they want to come into the picture and they want a specific matter in a state to be investigated by the CBI, then they can ask the CBI to take up that particular matter. That is the power that the higher judiciary has. In that matter, if the Supreme Court or the High Court have asked the CBI to investigate the matter, then the concept of consent does not arise. Then the state government does not really need to give any consent, then they can go ahead and start investigating the matter, even if it is within a certain state. Do understand this. The state governments, they can request the CBI to take up certain matters by giving the consent. But if the higher judiciary has given the consent, a higher judiciary has asked the CBI to investigate a matter, then the state consent is not required. Now, if you look at the CBI, <clears throat> as you would understand, it is headed by the director. The CBI director is appointed by a three person committee. It is the prime minister, the leader of the leader of opposition specifically in Lok Sabha and the Chief Justice of India. Usually it is the Prime Minister or the ruling party that has a say in who would become the CBI director. Although if you can see here the majority is not with the ruling party. It is a three way contest but usually we see that the people who are favored by the ruling government end up becoming the director of the CBI that is the head of the CBI. Now, one of the unfortunate things about the CBI is, as I said in the beginning of the class, it is in the news more for wrong reasons as compared to the right reasons. There has been a lot of criticism of the CBI, specifically about how the CBI functions. Supreme Court very famously or infamously said that the CBI is a caged parrot. Caged parrot that only repeats the voice of its master. Meaning that the Supreme Court said that whatever the central government wants, the, so the opposition, the CBI repeats the same thing, whatever the government of India has told it to. This is what the Supreme Court had also said with respect to the CBI. Now, whenever you're writing an answer, make sure if you want to use these kind of quotes that the Supreme Court has used about the CBI, you can, but by giving the reference that the Supreme Court has also called the CBI as a cage parrot. There are many other problems with the functioning of the CBI. First, that you would expect with almost every other government agency, that is excessive political interference. It is no secret to anyone that whenever we have elections coming up, be it at the national level, be it at the state level, you see that the CBI starts becoming much more active, starts conducting a lot more raids. That is what the opposition members allege. That is that pressure is imposed on them specifically when they are very near to the elections. So there is a lot of political interference with respect to that particular office of the CBI. Then we have a lot of delays in concluding investigations. Now this is also do have to do something with how the political scenario in the country is. Let's assume that CBI right now, I'm just giving a hypothetical example. Let's assume CBI right now is investigating a matter against an opposition member. Let's say a person belonging to the Congress or some other party. Now, let's assume that all of a sudden the government changes and Congress comes to power or some other political party comes to power. They don't want these investigations to go forward. So you would see that for the next five to 10 years, these investigations will become silent and there will not be any headway in these kind of investigations. That is a very common trend that you see. 
whenever there is a change in power at the center government level or whenever there are certain changes in the political scenario let's say some political party starts favoring the center government all of a sudden you would see that the cbi cases specifically against them will slow down for example in 2014 when bjp came to power there were a lot of pending cases against the people in the bjp that were being investigated by the cbi but a lot of them slowed down since then and it is not a very unique trend to the party in power it is common with almost every political party that is also one of the problems that we have with the working of the cbi that has led to a loss of credibility because obviously when you see the premier investigative agency of the government of india being dropped down and being pressurized so much by the political authorities the people actually lose credibility then there's lack of accountability lack of accountability means even if the cbi has charged a certain person with a certain crime even if they cannot prove the same in the court there is no accountability means they don't have to come out with an explanation why they did that where were they wrong etc so even if their investigation is not really up to the mark they will not have to give any accountability or, or any answerability for that there is a shortage of personnel if you look at the structure of the cbi you would see at the lower level for example at the sub inspector level people are directly recruited into the cbi but when you go to the high level for example you go to the uh, director of the cbi or people who are heading the cbi at the top layer those are usually people who are ips officers who are then drafted to work in the cbi so if you have to enter the cbi directly usually you enter at the lower level that is the sub inspector level but at the very high level people are actually taken from other services such as the ips what has happened as a result of it is that there is a acute shortage of personnel now one interesting trick here is that you can use this kind of a point in almost every government agency there is an acute shortage of ifs officers indian foreign services there is an acute shortage of ias officers also there is an acute shortage of police there is an acute shortage of teachers almost every other government scenario that you can imagine you can use this particular point which will be a fact the cbi also has limited powers with respect to the consent that has to be provided by the respective states if a specific state does not give the required consent to the cbi the cbi does not have the power to function within that particular state also they require prior approval of the central government to conduct inquiry on employees of the central government especially who are at the level of joint secretary or above so if there is a complaint that is filed against a person who is at working at the level of joint secretary or higher than that then the cbi has to first get permission from the central government only then they can proceed with the same all these things together mean that the cbi cannot function as an independent investigative agency as they should if they want to uphold what the country stands for one of the other problems with the cbi and the chief justice of india the supreme court have been very very open with it is that the cbi does not function independently i earlier told you how the cbi actually called how the supreme court called the cbi as a caged parrot meaning that the cbi only investigates those cases with their master that is the central government tells him the cbi only gives the reports in such a manner that it pleases the central government all of that has not gone down well with the supreme court with the higher judiciary that is why you see every few months whenever there is a cbi case that is in the news these kind of statements come up from the supreme court that the cbi is a cage parrot cbi is losing its credibility etc this is not very uncommon i have just taken the snippet of the latest one from april 2022 but if you actually google these kind of statements you will see a lot of them being made time and time again by the higher judiciary this is a major cause of concern when the highest court in india does not see i to i with the highest investigative agency of the government of india because the chief justice thinks that the cbi is not working properly now with respect to the cbi there is one specific case that is time and time again quoted which is called the vinith narayan case of 1997 now the vinith narayan case of 1997 specifically was about the hawala transactions the illegal transactions of money that was being made in india in 1990s this is where the supreme court of india gave certain directives with respect to the cbi for example the supreme court said that cbi right now is not essentially supervised and they should be supervised by the cvc now what is cvc cvc is 
सेंट्रल विजिलेंस कमीशन सेंट्रल विजिलेंस कमीशन दिस इज अनदर ऑफ दो स्टैचुटरी बॉडीज यू वुड यू वुड हैव रेड इन पॉलिटी और इन गवर्नेंस इट्स अ थ्री मेंबर बॉडी विच हैज अ फोर ईयर टेन यूर नाउ वॉट डज इट डू एज अ नेम सजेस्ट दे आर द विजिलेंस कमीशन मीन्स whenever you have any corruption related complaints against any government office or government officer you can file that complaint to the cvc that is what the cvc does now cvc does not have their own investigative agency what the cvc does is it usually requires the cbi and other kind of agencies to take up the investigation but cvc is the agency where you can go and file a complaint against any corruption that you have now the supreme court said that the working of the cbi is unsupervised no one is actually over them seeing how they are working that responsibility should be given to the cvc so cbi should be supervised by the cvc who should keep a track of how they are working how exactly is it that the number of cases or the number of pending cases are going up etc if you ask has it happened in reality not really in reality even today you do not see that the working of the cbi is being supervised by the cvc but at least that is a direction that the supreme court had given the second thing that the supreme court said that there should be no interference in the day to day administration again has it been followed not really and do understand when i say that these recommendations have not been followed or when i say that there is a criticism of the cbi it is not limited to the current political party in power it has been the same ever since we had our independence in respect to which our political party comes to power essentially they want to control these kind of agency the the investigative agency and the other agencies that we have so that they can ensure that they remain in power for a longer time so this is a problem that we have had in cbi for a long time the other recommendation given by the supreme court was with respect to the cbi director that is the cbi director should have a tenure of at least 2 years what has happened is earlier the cbi directors who essentially was the head of the cbi whenever they did not agree with what the central government used to say they were transferred or they were removed from their job very very easily that is what used to happen earlier what the supreme court said is that should not happen the cbi director should be given a safety of tenure for at least 2 years so that he or she can work independently the supreme court also said that the appointment should be by a committee which we just discussed of three members prime minister leader of opposition the lok sabha and the chief justice of india now there was a question that was being asked here the question was what if there is no leader of opposition in the lok sabha so as you all know for having the leader of opposition the lok sabha the opposition party must have at least 10% seats in lok sabha for example right now also the single largest opposition party congress does not have 55 seats then what happens there was a change that was introduced with the lokpal act of 2014 because this problem was existing with the lokpal also in the lokpal law also there was a similar provision that in the committee of lokpal appointment one of the members was a leader of opposition of the lok sabha now the law is that if we do not have a leader of opposition of the lok sabha then in place of that person the leader of single largest opposition party would take that place so who is the leader of the single largest opposition party that will be the congress leader as of today so if we don't have official leader of opposition that place will be taken by the leader of the single largest opposition party that is the same with cbi also that is the same in case of the lokpal as well i discuss about the concept of general consent and i have a few questions with that as well so i'll answer those as well there is a question that is general consent is already available with cbi or do they have to take general consent so gargi what happens is the state governments have to give consent to the cbi and they can take it back also for example almost all the states have given general consent or had given general consent to the cbi earlier that if you have to investigate a certain matter you can enter our state and when you enter our state you will be given almost the same powers as a state police like you can arrest the person you can detain the person you can investigate all that will apply to you also if the state wants they can take back the general consent as the state of west bengal and some other states have done meaning that from now onwards if the cbi enters the state they will not have the powers of the police so they cannot just go on and detain a person 
for example, I don't have the powers of police. I go ahead and detain a certain person. I would be charged with kidnapping, right? If the police takes you or the CBI takes you, then that is their authority. So if the CBI enters your state without your consent, then it is illegal for them to detain a person, investigate a person. So most of the states had given the general consent earlier, but now a lot of states are actually taking it back, thinking that it is now being misused by the CBI and by the central government. If, when general consent is not given, then the second option that we have, as I said, is specific consent, which has to be taken by the CBI on a case-to-case -case basis. The only exception is if the case is given to the CBI by the higher judiciary, that is the Supreme Court and the High Court. These are certain states which have taken certain, I won't say action, but which have taken certain steps to curtail the jurisdiction of the CBI in their state. One common thread that you would see is all these states are ones which are ruled by non-BJP parties. So Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Bengal, you see Punjab, Chhattisgarh, etc. Maharashtra became the fourth state to withdraw the general consent. Andhra Pradesh, Goa, Uttarakhand had earlier done so, but then reversed the decision. Why did they reverse it? They reversed it when the BJP or the favorable government as compared to the central government came to power. Rajasthan government, Rajasthan which is ruled by the Congress, they also withdrew the general consent. West Bengal did. Chhattisgarh did. So there is a trend that you will see specifically with respect to the states which are being ruled by the non-BJP parties. That is a withdrawal of the general consent. These are the details that you need to know about the CBI. These are sufficient enough details for you to answer most of the questions in the prelims and in the mains examination with respect to the Central Bureau of Investigation. Let me take up a few questions that have been asked here. Okay. Uh, we discussed about the concept when there is no leader of opposition then what would happen as I said the leader of the single largest opposition party will take up that position. Um, <clears throat> there is a question from Gunjan what happens if CBI enters any state without consent Gunjan as I said if they do then they would not be given any powers of the state they would be just common citizens they cannot investigate the matter they cannot take the person into custody etc. Uh, I have a question, what is the difference between CVC and CBI? As I said, CVC and CBI are different agencies. CBI is the investigative agency. So they are the ones who will investigate the cases. They are a much, much larger organization. They take up cases of a, of a lot of kinds. CVC is specifically an agency that is against corruption. So it's anti-corruption agency. Also, they don't have their own investigative arm. When you file and complain with the CVC, they will have to request the CBI only to take up the inquiry. Also, as a general citizen, I cannot go and file a complaint with the CBI. I can go to the police, file a complaint. I can file a complaint with the CVC also. That is also an option that I have available online. I can't go to the CBI to file a complaint. So these are very different agencies of the government of India that we have. <clears throat> okay, then I have a question. What does the statutory status mean? So if you have read in Indian polity, there are mainly three kinds of government bodies that you have. For example, there is one body called the constitutional body. Then the second types of body that we have are called statutory bodies. The third are executive bodies. Constitutional bodies are the ones which have been made by the constitution or which are mentioned in the constitution. For example, the Union Public Service Commission, the Election Commission of India, the CAG, the Finance Commission. These are the bodies which are written in the constitution. The constitution of India says, for example, under this particular article, there shall be a union public service commission. There shall be election commission of India. So they derive their authority from the constitution of India. Statutory bodies are the ones which are created by an act of parliament. So when the parliament passed an act or the parliament passed a bill, that is how these bodies were created. These are NHRC. National Human Rights Commission, the CVC, the Central Vigilance Commission, the CIC, Central Information Commission. These are the kind of bodies which you call as statutory bodies. Then third are executive bodies. Executive bodies are the ones that are just made by a government order. So government gave an order that we are making a body and the body is created that is an executive body. The best example of this can be Niti Aayog. The main difference between all these is that for a constitutional body, if you have to change anything in them, you have to require a constitutional amendment for that. For statutory bodies, you have to amend that particular act of the parliament by simple majority. For making any change in executive body, you just have to give another government order. Like when Modi government came in, they just gave an order to remove the planning commission, it was removed. They did not have to 
make any change in the constitution, they did not have to go to the parliament, etc. So these are the different bodies that we have. Okay. Um, then I have another question. What is the difference between, okay, there's a difference asked between a lot of agencies, difference between CBI, ED, that is Enforcement Directorate, IB, Intelligence Bureau, NIA, and CBDT. Okay. A lot of bodies have been mentioned which are very, very different from each other. Okay. CBI we just discussed. ED is Enforcement Directorate. They are the ones who take up specific cases with respect to one specific law that is Prevention of Corruption Act. So if there is a case with respect to Prevention of Corruption Act and it involves mainly money laundering, then ED will come up. So ED has very specific powers with respect to only very few laws. That is where they take up cases. IB Intelligence Bureau is very, very different. They are, they don't take up any cases. They are intelligence agency of the government of India. So they take up all the, or they gather all the intelligence. Their job is to identify if there is a threat to the government of India or to the people of India or not. NIA, that is the National Investigative Agency, is specifically for terrorism related cases. So it came up after the Mumbai terror attacks. It only takes up terrorism related cases, nothing else. CBET, uh, Central Bureau of Direct Taxes. This is again, as the name suggests, if you have defaulted in paying direct taxes, like income tax, then this body will come after you. And I really hope that is not the case because they are not a good body to have after you. So CBDT takes up tax related matters, especially direct tax related. Okay, that is how it happens. Okay, I'll take one last question. Uh, why CBI can only sue a motor take up cases in union territories and not states? Because again, that is a matter of jurisdiction. If the CBI starts taking up Suomoto investigations in state governments also, and the state governments will say, then where is our power? For state governments, they have the police under them. For state government, they have their own CID under them. For the central government, they have a separate agency that is the CBI. You can't have a situation where the central government starts using its agencies within the states. That is why the CBI has to be kept separate and the states have to be kept separate. Because if that is the case, if CBI starts taking up suave motor matters in the state government, then there will be a lot of problems in the state government, specifically the ones which are not being ruled by the party at the center will not be happy with it. These are most of the questions that we had with respect to the CBI. Thank you so much for watching this lecture. Make sure that you do hit the like button, do subscribe to YouTube channel of Baidu's IAS and do catch us live again at 3 p.m. for the next session of the ongoing knowledge series. Thank you so much.